What you see on your screen is one of the fiercest animals that no other living creature would challenge to a fight, at least not on a whim. What you see now are creatures from our species. In a parallel universe, if you encountered them on a busy stretch of road, honking at you, not only would you be ready to challenge them, but chances are you would take them down. But would you? So how exactly during our revolution did we make this switch from needing to be individually strong to becoming collectively powerful? Enter weapons. Weapons developed in two stages and each stage had a progressively staggering effect on us. Stage number one, handheld weapons. The most primitive handheld weapons were probably a heavy rock, a sharp tree branch or a piece of bone like you saw in 2001 a Space Odyssey. The effect was that it leveled the playing field for the weak and the strong members. Yes, the strong were also using weapons, but what if they were caught at a disadvantage, like probably when they were sleeping or if they had to face two or three attackers at the same time. But the first stage still had two limitations. Number one, the fight had to be close range. So there was still the chance that the attackers would sustain an injury, especially if the victim was the stronger one. Limitation number two, the number of attackers could not be more than three because a fourth one would only get in the way. And therefore, handheld weapons developed into stage two, where they became projectile weapons. These were weapons that could be thrown from a distance to hit a target. The most primitive projectile weapons were probably stones. Its effect was that the size of coalition could now grow into any number. Once distance weapons came into the picture, physical strength was no longer the deciding factor. What mattered was to be a part of a coalition and possibly to lead it. As the size of the coalition grew, the intergroup dynamics and friction needed higher and higher intelligence to navigate. And that is how our species developed its political skills. Weapons taught us politics. The limitation? None at all. Today, weapons have evolved into nuclear weapons and the political skills of our species have kept up remarkably well. That is why the scenario of fighting these guys will remain a hypothetical one. Not because you can't beat them, but because you can't beat them up. And while you're thinking about the correctness of that wordplay, let me distract you with this reminder. Politics isn't just restricted to professional politicians. If we are mindful, we'll catch ourselves practicing politics in every interaction of ours, be it with our colleagues in the workplace or when we are buying a product in the marketplace, or even with our loved ones. That's a sad reminder, isn't it? Blame it on this. This is how it all started. That's all from my side. I'll await your feedback. <laughs>